What wheelbase length do I want for my new truck? Now before you can answer that question, you've got to ask yourself two questions before that. Number one, what exactly will I be using this new truck for? And number two, do I plan on working that truck for its entire life at that type of work? Or is there a chance I may want to switch jobs and do something else with it later on? Let's start with the basics. Most new guys start with general freight and to do that they'll start with a, a Cascadia or a Volvo, a setback axle truck and for that application 220 to 240 wheelbase is ideal, the longer the better. Now I say the longer the better because 240 inches will give you more frame rail and you can mount toolboxes or a chain hangers or an APU or something like that. It'll give you more swing dip clearance which is better and it even may leave you enough room to hang a little bike on the back in case between uh, loads or a layover or something you want to get the bike down and ride on down to Walmart for some exercise. If I was specking a new truck, a setback axle truck today, I would spec a 240 wheelbase setback axle truck for general freight. If it's an old cab over you'd prefer to start hauling general freight, that same formula, that 220 to 240 inch wheelbase will still work well with an old cab over. Now in fact, if you end up with a cab over that has a 240 wheelbase, you've got a f fair bit of frame rail out back there and that's a good thing. Back in the old days, uh, what the old guys used to do would be take a headache rack and lie it down on the frame rails, fasten it down there and that would make them a deck so they could walk back and forth and work on their reefers and that was a good thing. It, it was better than falling off the side of the truck. Also on a cab over for a 240 wheelbase, if you're hauling flatbed that's a good thing because it gives you room to stand that headache rack up for protection to keep the load from going through the cab, gives you plenty of swing dip clearance. It's a good working combination for a cab over as well. If it's a long hood conventional with a double bunk you're thinking about for hauling general freight, I'd recommend a 260 wheelbase. If you're thinking about hauling reefer or flatbed, I'd recommend 270 to a 280 wheelbase. Speaking of hauling general freight, that brings us to today's sponsor, GP Transco, which is a general freight trucking company, a highly respected one, based out of Joliet, Illinois. GP Transco recently won a Top Workplace Award from the Chicago Tribune, and that's virtually unheard of for a trucking company. But it's because of the way they treat their people, with honesty and transparency. They offer good pay, a 401k plan, and great benefit package. Check them out at gptransco.com. I've been running a 280 wheelbase for my reefer work, and I find it's an ideal length. I've got room behind the bunk to get up and work on my reefer unit. I've got plenty of swing dip clearance. The truck scales well. I've got lots of room to slide my fifth wheel forward. I find it's an ideal working combination, and 280 wheelbase would be good too for most flatbed work. I recently watched a video on YouTube where a guy up in the Northwest is running a 292 wheelbase conventional with a small bunk so he can run a flatbed with a six foot overhang of steel rod out front of the trailer and still make the corners. 292 is a long wheelbase in anybody's book and that's as long a wheelbase as the factory will run without putting a steel insert inside the frame to prevent it from flexing. But in anybody's book, by the time you get up to a 292 wheelbase, that's a long truck. So once you get north of that 292 wheelbase up into the 300 inch wheelbase truck, you're talking show truck length. And while it looks cool as hell, when you get a truck that long, it may not be able to get into all the tight spots that you need to get into. Now a 300 inch wheelbase truck looks great, but they're not for the new guys. I've known guys that have spec 300 inch wheelbase trucks or longer run them a year and ended up having to chop the truck because they were too long to get into some of the places they needed to get into and you don't want to be chopping the, the frame rails on a brand new truck. So remember, if you're thinking about th specking a 300 plus wheelbase truck, you better be an old hand at this game. So there you have it. For general purpose freight, general dry freight with a setback front axle, a 220 to a 240 wheelbase, is ideal for what you want to do. If you're looking at a long hood conventional and more specialized work, you want to go longer. You want to get up into the 270 to 280 
inch wheelbase range. Now I've got a story for you about wheelbase and it dates back to 1985, believe it or not. In 1985, I was running a 1984 Kenworth with a friend of mine, a conventional. I pulled into Kenworth and everybody was crowded around this little white truck and I thought, I wonder what's going on there. So I rolled in, parked the truck, went into Kenworth, they were gonna change the oil or something like that, and I, I got them started. And I walked back to see what everybody was looking at. And, and what I saw was at the time, what I thought was the ugliest truck in the world. And it was one of the first anteaters to ever come out, and they'd gotten one at this Kenworth dealer. And I said to the, to the one salesman that I knew there, I said, man, that's, that's something. Is that for like city work? He goes, no, we're going to do it. General purpose, highway work. It'll be able to do anything. I said, you're kidding, right? It's too small. He said, let's go for a ride. You won't believe how this truck handles. I said, okay. He hopped in the passenger side. I hopped in the driver's side. We took it for a spin. I could not believe how well this little truck turned, how sharp it turned. And it was one of the first setback axle trucks that they'd come out with. It was the first one Kenworth had built anyway. But it turned circles around the truck I was driving. And at the time I thought, you know, that's really cool. And it turns really well and it'd be great for city work. But I can't ever see it working as a highway truck. Well, it goes to show you how much I knew. Today about 70% of the on-highway trucks are setback axle conventionals. And you know what? That's one major change that's happened in our trucking industry in the last number of years. Stay safe, keep the rubber side down, watch the wheelbase you're specking, and we'll see you on the backhaul.